almost impossible to read uh, with the camera anyway. With Robert Louis Stevenson inside uh, St. Giles Church. Beautiful relief though. Tribute to Anesthesia. James Young Simpson, that was interesting. Scholar, poet, philosopher, professor of Greek. Margaret Oliphant. Robert Ferguson. Just to give you some context here. Back to Stevenson. John Knox. Statue of him, anyway. Is he here? I don't know. If so, maybe here behind him. Doesn't look like it. In 1688, King James VII ordained that the mortification of those moody granted in 1649 to build the church should be applied to the erection of this structure. I have great concerns out here at Cannon Gate Cemetery in Edinburgh on a rare sunny afternoon. This is on the Royal Mile, not too far from uh, Holyrood. And I thought I would check this out. Those guys are kind of buried there in the grass, but eh, doesn't look too pristine. We'll just walk through it. Let's see what we got here. It's a, it's a small churchyard or kirkyard, as they call it. James Allen, little Allen clan, Isabel Gordon. The burying ground of the right honorable Lord McLeod looking at probably 19th century here oh 18th 1789 surprising you see the buses going by from the Royal Mile let's see what this place has to offer this is an ominous looking uh, grave here right at the corner of the church itself just sort of by, it, by its lonesome here in the gravel. Tradition says that this is the grave of David Riccio. 
1566, transported from Holyrood. So we've got our church wall markers here. Interred here, the corpse of Alex Ramsay. Glatter in Canongate, Burgess, and Guild Brother in Eden, 1764. As well, Jane Walker. This one's looking a bit too rough here, but uh, 1645 is the year. some soot. Alex Miller Glazier in Cannon Gate who departed this life. And then that's it. It falls off from there. Too bad. This is an interesting setting. Uh, we're at the base of the a hill here. I'm going to pan over to that in a second. Thomas Hay, M.D. Major Samuel Sinclair Hay. We're looking at 1880s, so late 19th century. Halkett. Youngest daughter of Major General Frederick Halkett. 1798. This is some pea gravel here I'm walking on. This is very fine. But yeah, so back to the setting. Now that I'm away from the Royal Mile, we can see this uh, hill up top. I'm south of the castle. I forget what they call that. Something seat? Wallace's seat or something like that? I believe that's what that hilltop is there. I haven't gone up there yet. The family crypt here. A little tough to see inside. There's a plaque on the outside. Sir Walter Scott. stood by the open grave of his publisher and friend, John Ballantyne. So this must be Ballantyne. That's all getting a bit washed out, but I think you see now. It's actually got a nice patina, nice color. Ooh, let's get up here. Uh, so I see some cool carvings here on the wall. Christopher Robson. Actually, that's new. Look at that. Doesn't look it, but let me see if I can get that straightened. 1956 to 2003, he made music in this kirk. That's nice. Bassoon player. The skull and crossbones down here. Jesse Hogarth Palmer or Balmer. Nisbets Hayes, 19th century. Barbara Brand, 1823. This one's got some patina on it. A lot of Latin. James Campbell coming up here. John Campbell, Esquire of the Citadel, eldest son of John Campbell Esquire of the Citadel, and then James Campbell of St. Germain's and Tofts, directed by his great-grandson John Archibald Campbell, 1836. Little Campbell clan action here. This is peaceful back here. There are some people up front. Let's see what that's all about. George Ritchie, merchant, Edinburgh, 1825, Campbell of Toffs, 
This is really nice, actually. I really like the setting here. It's so peaceful. There's some little apartments and houses along the perimeter. But I like this uh, Mar Marchmont Burial Ground Gate. I'm about to pass through here. It smells nice, too. We've got these nice... Uh, Purpley flowers here, whatever that is. No idea. Hyacinth or something. Plant expert could say. Actually, there's not much going on down here. Just a nice green. And a big central column. Must be for a reverend or something. Soldier's Monument. Who died in Edinburgh Castle. 1692 to 1880 so that's a that's a general memorial then we got some folks here in the uh, in the wall and some of these little cordoned off plots or crypts that are completely overgrown sure what's going on in there I guess they, they have to get to it that's gonna need some restoration in there actually it's kind of a cool spot too we can see the back of the church quite green here and then we've got some family crypts here they're like little garages little sheds little storage shed that they, they could make use of them <laughs> this is some lost space in here Hubert Peter Hubertson, William Muir, Merchant, Late Merchant. That's the second time I've seen that phrase, Late Merchant. William Charles inside. Souter. Berwick. Can I get up this side? I can. James Blythe. Again, another kind of cool view here. Hume, Alexander Hume. century Robert excuse me Robert Cameron painter a painter Cannon Gate this is the Cannon Gate Cemetery 1860 I'm a bit in the Sun here which is rare right that's very rare here in this town and have problems with the sun. Look at the soot on this thing. Holy cow. Think of the think of the coal fires that had to burn for John Walker here and Elizabeth Scott and Thomas Walker for that level of darkness. A little skull and crossbone here. William Henderson. 1771 Robert Bruce 1879 not Robert the Bruce but Robert Bruce George Burns not the comedian Although, similar year, age 96 years. I think George Burns lived to 99 or 100. Different George Burns.
Robert Scott, druggist in Edinburgh. Getting the glare again here. It's kind of unusual. Keep getting this top glare. Maybe we can dispel that a bit. 1810, another ore. I've seen, seen a lot of ore family here. Uh, so I'm assuming Bobby Orr is Scottish by now. Really in the corner here, Thomas Witter. Broken. Mary Fuller. Okay, so the folks were around here. Robert Ferguson, poet. 1772. No sculptured marble here, no pompous lay, no storied urn nor animated bust. The simple stone directs pale Scotia's wave way to pour her sorrows o'er her poet's dust. R.L. Stevenson, Robert Louis Stevenson, planned to renovate Robert Ferguson's tombstone with the following inscription, but died before he could do so. This stone, originally erected by Robert Burns, has been repaired to the charges of Robert Louis Stevenson and is by him rededicated to the memory of Robert Ferguson as a gift of one Edinburgh's lad to another. The Salter Society and its 50th anniversary, 1850. Huh. And then this very cool looking thing here. Just the patina, right? The moss and the, and the sculpture of the skull, the hourglass, the cherub. Agnes Muat, M-O-U-A-T. It fades out by the time we start looking for a year. Agnes Miller, 1812. So the thing about this graveyard, and I'm guessing I'm not going to see anything, I thought there might be some new commemoration, but the story is, is that uh, Charles Dickens visited this grave uh, graveyard and came upon the stone of Ebenezer Lennox Scroogey. Obviously, the inspiration for Ebenezer Scrooge. And it was one of these stones that just said merchant. But he read it as mean man, <laughs> which is kind of a strange interpretation, but I totally understand and have misinterpreted stones many times myself, as you know, if you've seen a few of my videos. So that was it. He thought it was so strange that uh, someone would have that moniker of mean man and use his name for that character but unfortunately they did a clean up here some time ago and Ebenezer Scroogey stone got removed but I think there is some movement or some some organization wants to get a commemoration here and that would certainly increase the uh, Visitation. William Anderson. I've got an Adam Smith stone here. I'm not sure what that's about, but that's pretty cool. If this is the grave of Adam Smith, he would certainly be the most prominent figure in here. The economist. Oh, yeah. No, here he is. I'm, <laughs> I'm seeing this little thing on the ground, but right against the wall, here it is. Adam Smith's grave. Okay, I had no idea. I was coming in here for Scrooge. Author of The Theory of Moral Sentiments and Wealth of Nations, 1790. All right, cool. So a little Adam Smith action. But no Ebenezer Scrooge. He's so he yeah, he's here. That Ebenezer Scroogey Scroogey character is here. He just no longer has a marker. The 
This large one is for George Chambers, plumber. Bequeath this property to the dean and faculty of advocates to found new infirmary or sick and hurt hospital. 1836. That's interesting. And we get some cool stuff in the church wall here. These profiles, probably some ministers or reverends. Royal Scottish Academy in memory of two brothers. Alexander hmm, Rung, Rungaman and John Rungaman. 17, late 18th century. So there you can see Robert Louis Stevenson and the sort of how he's up against that building there in the corner, which is a really cool setting. So, not bad. E Ebenezer Scrooge inspiration and Robert Louis Stevenson in this small churchyard.